It's been about four days since I recorded the stuff that you're about to watch. Um, I still haven't brushed my hair. I've washed it. So that's just made the tangles even worse. But at least it's clean. I want to apologize for my um, energy throughout this video. Um, I'm not in the best state of mind right now, and that's okay. It's going to take me a little bit. Um, I'm pretty sure that the misdiagnosis has a lot to do with this particular episode happening. Um, but that's okay. I just got to wait for it to pass. And I just want to say thank you for all the recent people that have become mermaids. And if you haven't become one yet, consider subscribing. to the doctor today and I didn't vlog it because I was with my dad and I kind of felt weird doing it. Um, it wasn't really worth vlogging because I was just going to my GP. I guess I could have vlogged, um, but I didn't. I haven't been myself recently and that's kind of what inspired me to do this video because um, I want y'all to know, I want to update y'all on everything that's happening being medically with me. So just to recap on what happened at the doctor's office, um, I was able to get my wheelchair prescription um, printed off to me. Me and um, the doctor talked and um, we came to the conclusion that we're gonna keep um, pots on the prescription because um, my because he was the one that diagnosed me and he's had three tilt table tests that came back positive. Um, so he's encouraged me to um, get a second opinion because he doesn't like me. He was a little confused on the machines and even the doctor didn't know anything about it. Um, so I might get a second opinion. I don't know. Kind of just depends on how, on if I can honestly, because it was really hard to get that tilt table test. That whole area is kind of confusing. It sounds like there still could be a possibility I do have POTS, um, but we don't really know. It's... I'm frustrated about it, to say the least, but... Um, he wanted to keep it on there. And so we kept it on there. So at this point, I don't really know if I have POTS or if I don't have POTS. The misdiagnosis could maybe have not have been even a misdiagnosis. The machines could have been a, the problem. <laughs> I'm getting sent to that other doctor and um, haven't made the appointment for that yet, but I will when I can. They have to send the information over still, so we're waiting on that. I am still trying to save up for a wheelchair because the wheelchair I get through insurance won't be something I can transport myself. It'll be better than the one I have now, um, but because it's we because it's always good to have a heavy duty wheelchair to go out and do things to the zoo, for instance. But I still need something that I can move and lift myself when I want to go on little trips to like Walmart and Walgreens and the movies. Something small like that. Because getting the ramps out and all that stuff is impossible for me and is difficult for whoever's doing it. So, I don't know. The whole ramps and things kind of makes the whole wheelchair seem like a burden to other people. It's a wonderful gift to me but the other people that are doing the taking the wheelchair out of the car it's not a gift to them it's not really doing anything for them really it's just added work i know that my illness is the burden i'm not the burden but it's really hard to separate yourself from the illness um 
and other people have a real hard time doing that too and it's noticeable so I really 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 hope that I can get a wheelchair myself it's just they're so expensive and I'm the one saving up for it so so I'm hoping it'll only take like nine months that'll be for a um knockoff of the easy light cruiser so it doesn't go as far and um I don't really know much about it which kind of worries me um I am looking at other chairs but that's the only one that I can really afford that does everything I need it to do that I can lift and stuff and then my last two things for the the last two things at the doctor's office is I got my B12 shot. I get that every week. And then the last thing is my disability parking plate tag thing um, is expiring next month. So we got a, um, what do you call it? So my doctor put it as a permanent disability parking plate placker so I'll just have to renew it instead of going to him and getting it and getting a new one new like form every single time because it was um previously he put it as uh what do you call it do, do, do. temporary today I went to my GP to um get my Cymbalta raised um I've been on that for about a year now and um, the journey to finding a medication that worked for me was hard. Um, and even then, still, the prescription is not perfect. We actually raised it today, so it's at the highest it can be. So finding medication was super hard because I have trouble keeping medications down and um, taking medications. The intensity of my depression was so strong that I didn't want to move. I didn't want to do anything. I don't know how to explain it. I could need to urinate and be in tremendous pain, but wouldn't want to get up. Just wanted to sit there. My medication would be right in front of me. And I would be just so numb and heavily depressed. I don't know how to explain it. It's just this overwhelming, suffocating feeling all over you. It doesn't matter if you're distracting yourself or if you're watching TV. It lingers there constantly. And it's just... You can never understand depression until you've dealt with it. The reason we raised my medication was because um, I'm still having extreme depressive, I guess you could call them episodes. Um, before I was taking the medication, I was constantly um, having that depressive, heavy, mind-numbing feeling all over you and... When I started taking the medication, it I first noted signs I first noticed signs of it working because I was it was weird. I was um willing to take it. And it's not that beforehand I was unwilling. It was just when I'm sitting there and I'm looking at the bottle and I'm like, okay, you need to take the medication, move your arm, take the medication. It was so much easier than it was beforehand. And I went back to my GP at the time and it was I was actually seeing the assistant then and um, I told her, I'm like, I'm not really sure if this means the medication's working or maybe I'm convincing myself better, but um, it seems to be doing something, so we're going to stick with it. Um, I did tell her about my increased night sweats. She says it could have been the medica it could be the medication, but we weren't sure. 
and she asked me, like, do you want to change it because of the night sweats? Because it is a symptom. Um, at the time, I thought the way I was before I was taking the medication, even though it had only been like two or three weeks, was so much worse than the experience it was to wake up drenched in your own sweat at night. The side effect was worse. Was The side effect was worth it for me. So I kept taking it. As I took it, we slowly increased it. And every time we increased it, my night sweats would get worse again for a while. Um, but then it would ease out. And um, I wouldn't really be that... I would not really have that many night sweats. Um, which was really good. And, um, you know... I don't know if I said this, but I had already had night sweat due to my nightmares. So we weren't really sure if it was the medication or the night sweats. And I really still don't know. Um, I do have night sweats now, but it's every now and then. Um, last night I had it really bad, um, but before that I was going two weeks without having, having it. So um, I think it has to do more with my mental health than the medication but there's but either way i thought it was worth keeping the medication so now it's raised to the highest it can be so i'm taking four pills every day with these we're hoping raising it will help um i know a medication can only do so much but there's also so much I can do too. So we're limited on both sides. My hope is that by raising it the period of time I have um, a depressive episode um, would be shortened. I'm not sure I'll ever be depression free, but um, shortening it would, I guess that's my goal. Um, my depression kind of takes, um, I like my room, I like to be a clean person. Um, I've always had a messy room as a child due to my depression. And, um, when I started my self-love journey, um, part of that was wanting to keep my room clean because that's just something I've always wanted. I've always wanted to be a tidy person. I feel like my depression feeds onto a lot of my negative autism traits. Um, you know, I've been diagnosed with OCD, bipolar, um, and um, generalized anxiety, a bunch of stuff, but all that is like bubbled into the autism. And as I mentioned in my autism video, um, I hate brushing my hair. And I'm kind of nervous to show you all this because it's pretty, I feel like my hair is pretty bad. But it doesn't look like it's too much in a, too much of a mess right now. It's totally, I need to re-dye it and um, it just looks like a really crappy, messy bun. But this is the extent of what my depression is doing to my hair, kind of. I'm pretty much destroying it. This whole thing is a big knot. It's clean. Just matted. Reason my hair gets this bad is because I have countless nightmares and I don't even know if you can really see all the tangles but it's just, yeah there's a big knot right there. You can see that one. nightmares every night tossing and turning and just putting it up in a bun because I don't want to like tackle it brushing hurts my hands and when I have a depressive state trying to push through my, my depression and my pain to brush my hair and look presentable is hard
I don't cut my hair because I love it. And even if I cut my hair, this would still happen. Because you see down here, it's not tangled. It's this fucking top. My parents are li and my family is like, just cut your hair. It won't happen anymore. And that's bullshit. I'm not going to cut my hair because then that's just... That'll just feed my depression. And let it win. I try... I tend to look at depression as a person. It wants to destroy my life and take everything that I love. And one of those things is my hair. It's just hair. But when I brush this and get this out, it's gonna take about six hours due to the amount of times I'm gonna have to stop. If you're depressed, I really hope you get help. Everybody deserves help. My self-esteem was so bad to the point where I didn't think I had the right to talk to people or to look at people. If there is something on the wall in public, I wouldn't read it even if I wanted to because I was afraid if someone saw me read it, they would think, why is she reading it? She doesn't have a right to do that. My mental health is nowhere near perfect. Nowhere near perfect. But I love myself, and I'm still depressed. It's not my fault. I felt like I needed permission for so long in my life, and I still struggle with that. I still feel like I need permission to do things and to be myself. Even if I don't know the person, I feel like I need them to tell me that what I'm feeling and what I'm doing and who I'm talking to is okay. And so if someone out there feels like they need permission to love themselves or to go to the doctor and ask for help, consider this your permission. My depression feeds onto my pain. When I am depressed, everything else that I'm dealing with piles on five times harder. Um, when you're having to pr push yourself through pain and depression, it gets to the point where I just sit and don't do anything. I lay in my bed or I sit in my chair and distract myself. And Although distracting yourself when you're depressed is a good thing, most of the time it's best to... Um, cope with your depression the best way you can at the moment and um, always continue to look for better alternatives to dealing with it. <laughs> when it gets to, when my depression gets to the most extreme, it's so, it's just so intense. I can't, there's not words to describe it. Your hygiene becomes a back burner. When you're chronically ill, um, taking care of yourself is already harder. And then when you're throwing depression into the mix, it's even, even harder. Something that's helped me, um, for instance, like brush my teeth and take a shower and brush, my, wash my hair, um, is kind of having like a little schedule um to do so um that's helped a lot but um keeping the schedule has been a hard thing for me when you're not going around people and you're not going to be around others you're kind of like well i don't care why do i need to do it why do i need to get up i don't I'm not going to see anybody, no one's coming over, no one's talking to me. <laughs> Why? And I get that's gross. I understand that. But it needs to be talked about. No matter how much this embarrasses me putting this out on the internet, I this needs to be talked about because it has been talked about, but not enough. And... There's no reason somebody should deal with this by themselves. 
living life without chronic illness and depression and mental health is fucking hard enough. And if you are the particular people that are dealing with depression and chronic illness or either one of those on top of just life in general, you do only live once. <laughs> and I encourage y'all to go get help. If you think that you are content enough with doing it by yourself, I, I really strongly believe that that is your depression talking and not you. Nobody wants to be depressed and no one's happy or content being depressed. That is a lie you're telling yourself. I love myself so fucking much and I never thought I would love myself. I'm so thankful in this point in my life to be myself. If you don't love yourself, I recommend you start by finding one thing that you really like. So maybe that can be your sense of humor. Maybe you really like your sense of humor. Okay, so that was mine. I really like my sense of humor, even though most of it's probably really stupid and vulgar. I really like my sense of humor. And that's the thing I focused on for a long time. And so it focused on my sense of humor. And then I focused on how excited I get when I really, really, really like something. I love how excited I get and how intensely I can feel music and how intensely I can love other people and how much I fucking love animals. Like, they're little fur balls of heaven to me. Um, I love the things that I'm into and I love the fact that I'm autistic and I love the fact that I'm different. I'm pretty different than the majority of the people in the world. And those likes turned into the loves. And I hope that something like that happens to you too. So, if I were you, I would start writing down things that I love about myself and things that I'm grateful about myself. And if writing something down is a difficult thing for you, just think it. And you'd sit there watching a movie and you'd be like, hmm, what am I grateful for today? What do I love about myself today? What's something that I did today that really made me like myself? It might at first feel like you're lying to yourself. For a long time it felt like I was lying to myself. Your mind is a garden. And you get to plant the flowers. And you get to pick the weeds. So if you don't like something in your brain or in your mind, pull it out. I have anger issues. I do not like my anger. I don't want to be... I want my anger to go away, if all possible. My anger blinds me. And I can't get past my anger sometimes. That's one of the things I don't like about myself. I don't like my anger. And I'm working on changing that. It's not something that's going to take overnight. I can't pull that weed out of my brain today and never be... And never be overly angry again. But I can work on it. So every time I'm about to get angry, I can try to talk to myself and calm myself down. And each time I get angry, I have another chance to better myself. And I like that. I like that I'm willing to better myself. And self-improvement is so important. You can, you, there is never, ever, 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 something that you don't need to be improved in your life. And, um, that was one thing I really liked about religion. There's always a lot of self-improvement in it. Um, and when I grew out of my faith, that was something I missed. And so I'm like, why do I need to miss it? I can do that myself. I can improve myself myself. I know what I like and know what I want in my life and know how I want to be and I know who I am and I can make that happen. So for instance, there's a word I don't want to say anymore. I do not want to say I just blank because I feel like that diminishes what I just did. So I just went to the doctor or I just went to an award show, which I've never done, or I just went to the movies or I just took a shower. I feel like that diminishes the tasks that I did. So I don't want to say just anymore. That's something I'm working on improving myself over. 
Um, other people might not view that as an improvement, but I view that as an improvement. Not brushing my hair every day, that's something I don't really like about myself. I don't think it's personally a, a trait about myself, more of difficulties that I'm dealing with because of um, disabilities that I have. But um, that's something I hope to change one day. I hope to be able to um, have a night routine where I can brush my hair every night and brush my hair in the morning once I've woken up enough. That's my goal. That way, brushing my hair would be a lot easier. And um, after I tackle this hair, I can do that for a while, you know, but then eventually I get out of the routine again and the depression hits again and I'm back to putting my hair up in this beautiful and I'm back in putting my hair up into this bun that I think hides the mess pretty well besides the I don't know but yeah so that's how I particularly cope with my depression I work on slowly self-improving myself and that Part of that was starting taking medication, which there is no shame about that. If you need a medication, take the medication. If you find something that actually works for you, it's like gold in a bottle. And I wouldn't call them happy pills because when you take depression medication, it's not going to make you happy. I don't understand why they've gotten that name. But depression pills will not make you happy. You have to make yourself happy. Depression pills are meant to aid you in helping yourself. And if you need that, either temporary or for the rest of your life, please, please take it. I am going to brush my hair today. I am in a little, lot of better mood today. I'm pretty sure you might be able to tell. I'm not really sure what's gotten me in a better mood. I'm in a lot better mood. I have been, you know, taking the four pills for the last four days. Maybe that's doing it. Maybe the depression episode, whatever the fuck you call it, is just starting to lift up. I don't know what it is, but I'm not complaining. <laughs> so, um, I just want to say thanks for watching. I totally appreciate everybody that's watching all the way to the end. Y'all are amazing. Um, I love y'all, and have a beautiful, beautiful day. Bye.